What's up, nerds? So I just finished Superman and Lois, season four, episode three, and it was good. It hit, it, tug, it tugs at the heartstrings a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I thought it would be a little bit more action packed -y, but it was fine. It was fine. We did see get the loss of a big character, which um, was kind of a bummer. And it did. I got teary eyed because I was like, oh, my gosh, they, they're doing another. They did another hologram. I'm like, you guys stop doing the Tony Stark hologram. I'm getting I'm getting all, uh, you know, upset, not mad, but like, you know, like Ooh, and everything. Um, I thought this, I thought this episode was, was really good. I, you know, I think that, you know, we only have, what is it? I think this is only 10 episodes. So we only have seven episodes left. And I'm just like, man, they are, they are like pulling out this, they are not uh, pulling out the stops and everything. And I think that they're really giving us TV that we, I think we want and we need. Um, cause this is like, I want to be honest with you. This is the only show that I can think of right now that's on TV that I'm, excited to watch like that i'm just like i cannot wait for the next episode um i love this show i think that they really you know bring heart to the characters and i just i just love every minute of it i just love it i love it. i love it okay i'm gonna get into this breakdown and everything take not take up too much of your time and because uh this episode was very much focused on general lane and uh it was good it was good um, all right, let's get into this. Here we go. So with the loss of Superman from the last two episodes, the Department of Defense is really feeling the hurt in not having a superpowered being. So they ultimately decide to get Steel and Starlight, uh, better known as John Henry Irons and Natalie Irons, to take the place of Superman. And I thought this was a good idea, you know, uh, who who better to get uh, to to replace Superman than, you know, this duo. But I do have to admit, I'm all like, well, why don't you just get Jordan, you know, because he's pretty he's Superboy pretty much. I mean, with this stupid costume and those goggles and everything so dumb. But uh, why not get him to do it, you know? And but at the same time, I'm all like, I would get as many like powered beings as i could like i try to find all of them i tried to get that stupid bitch from season two uh you know with her you know a uh, parasite or whatever she was all floaty and shit i try to get her but be like you know see so like yo can you can you be super powered because we need help loser uh but you know i um i it was a good idea it was a good idea so the father and daughter duo they're living in metropolis and they both agree to go and work for the department of justice and so they head over over to the DOJ and tell them that they're all in. Again, good choice. Uh, I like both these characters. Both the actors are doing a good job. I really like the actor that's playing John Henry Irons. He's I he I really like that character a lot. I'm I'm bummed that he's not in going to be in it more because you know you know they had to cut costs. So the some of a lot of the regular characters turned into just supporting characters. But uh, yeah, no good. They had I love I love the Steel character and I love him on this show. So uh, yeah. So during this time, Jonathan pretty much blames his brother Jordan for the death of their father because he lost the heart in the previous episode. So after having a huge emotional breakdown in the barn. While he's like coming to terms with the loss of his father, Jonathan discovers that through all the stress that it like, you know, jump starts his superpowers and he gets, uh, you know, Superman's abilities and is immediately able to fly and do, you know, the cold breath and the laser beams, all that super fun stuff. So I... I like I want to be honest with you. I like the fact that Jonathan's got getting powers or got powers now but i'll be honest with you the whole time i was all like well what was that whole um uh the storyline in season was it two with the drugs you know when he's like sniffing the um the uh, kryptonite x or x kryptonite or whatever i'm all like what was that storyline if because that that just kind of like for me personally it cemented that jonathan wasn't gonna get powers and he needed this little boost, you know, I'm like, why wouldn't he get powers then? You know, with the, well, it, uh, at the same time, though, I'm all like, it's fine because I like it. And it also, you know, had this kind of dynamic through this episode, uh, which we'll talk about in, in a little bit. But uh, I, I just thought uh, I really I did like that part of the program. 
So during this time, Jordan doesn't know how to take the fact that Jonathan has powers now. And he's feeling a little bit of jealousy because of that, because not only does he have powers and Jordan doesn't feel special anymore, but Jonathan is such a natural at using them. And this plays into Jordan. I'm going to talk about it in just a little bit, but, you know, this whole jealousy thing, it's it's kind of annoying, but, you know, I mean, I kind of get it. But at the same time, I just go, you know, if if I had a twin brother and I do have a twin brother, so I would know and I got powers and he didn't have powers and all of a sudden he had powers. I'd be like, dude, we both have powers. I'd be like, wonder twin power activate. You know what I'm saying? So I'm all like, I don't understand Jordan's like mentality. Like, I do not get him. He is not team, uh, you know, Kent, in my opinion, he's very much like team jordan you know feel bad for me the whole time so in the previous episodes while jordan was being tricked by luther into his little lair to get his father's heart which was crushed in front of him it was revealed then that lois uh, was being phoned in by luther and she had to decide which one of her children she would choose to save and luther reveals to jordan that lois picked jonathan during that phone call, Jordan then confronts his mother on her decision uh, and why she picked Jonathan, saying that he was her favorite. And she said that she picked Jonathan because he did not have powers and he didn't have a chance to defend himself. Now, I just want to say right now, and I said it last time, I would have picked Jonathan, too, if the choice was given to me because and I thought Lois's reasoning was sound. And in fact, I gave that reason last, uh, uh, my last review on this. Jordan has powers. He is able to protect himself a lot better than Jonathan, who does not have powers. And, jo and, and then I, I liked how Jordan was, and I'll, I'll tell you what I was going to say earlier, but I liked how Jordan was all like, Luther said you'd say that when she was like, I love you both equally. Of course, I have two kids. I love both of them equally. But Jordan, okay, I'm going to say this about Jordan. Jordan is a little bitch, all right? He was a little bitch in season one. He's a little bitch now. And nothing in the subsequent cute future is going to change that. He's a fucking simp beta male that does nothing but sit here and, uh, feel bad for me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got anxiety. Uh, Sarah doesn't like me. Uh, my brother's better at football than me. Uh, my brother now has powers and I'm not special. Get the fuck over yourself, Jordan. You are a little bitch. And somebody needs to tell him he's a little bitch. And none of these people will because they're all like, oh, we love you. Yeah, I love you. But sometimes you need to hear hard truth, motherfucker. And you are one sad, pitiful excuse for a man. G grow a dick and stop being a little bitch like you are. Sorry your pussy hurts, fucking idiot. All right, moving. Sorry about that vent. I, I, he's just such a whiny little bitch and so annoying. During this time, Lex Luthor manages to get a phone call, a FaceTime conversation with General Lane by recruiting a DOD soldier known as Jones that we heard about in last episode. And he's doing his via uh, his, his bidding uh, via, you know, threatening Jones's family. Lex uses the call to threaten general lane to reveal where his daughter is at and general lane is just like i'm not going to tell you kind of thing so then luther then threatens to send doomsday over to attack the dod and general lane but general lane still refuses to reveal where lex's daughter is at and so then jones and sam lane the general start to fight over the gun and General Lane gets shot in his side as the Jones guy flees. So General Lane now, he's all like bleeding out and everything because he got shot. And I'm all like, of course you did, because that's how it works out. And, you know, I mean, this part was fine. I'm glad that General Lane was like, I'm not telling you where your daughter is. And I did like later on, he's like, he's like, I told that girl I would be strong for her. And I'm like, that's good. I like that he kept his word and he was he did it at the the sake of his own life. I like that a lot. I think that says a lot to his character, even though I know he's not like a real person. It says a lot to his character. And I liked that. It was it was it was good to see that. So Doomsday arrives right not long after he gets shot. And he wins in a fight against Steel and Starlight, which I thought would be a little bit longer, but it was fine. It was pretty good. So then General Lane walks up to Doomsday, right? And he tells Luther on the phone that he is not going to give up 
the location of his daughter and give in to his demand, which leads to Doomsday then breaking Sam Lane's neck and killing him. And so I have to just say, first off, that's one way for cutting costs on your show is to get rid of a cast member. And um, I but it was really sad to see General Lane die. Um, I did think he would he would make it through the entire uh, series. But, you know, I thought that this was was I thought that, again, it goes back to General Lane, the character's character. And I liked that a lot. I'm glad that they didn't, you know, sacrifice his character for, you know, just I'm, I'm not quite sure what they would do it for. But uh, I, I did like it. A lot. I mean, I didn't like seeing him die, but I'm glad that he he stood his ground. And he was all like, I'm not going to let you hurt these people to get to me. I'm just going to come to you. I'm not going to give you what you want. And if that means I have to lose my life for it, then I will do that. And I liked that. I thought it was great. So shortly before being killed by Doomsday, General Lane injects himself with the serum made from Superman's blood in order to try to make his heart a viable match for Clark's own heart. So Starlight and Steel reveal General Lane's plan in the fact that he was looking for a donor to attempt this approach with, but after realizing after he was shot, he uses himself as the donor. So, I mean, a small piece of me is all like, this was a good plan, but at the same time, I'm just all like, um, I feel like you could have just given the serum to somebody else and they could have found a donor. Like, you could have gave it to Lois and be like, find a donor heart. Because I feel like she would have been on board with it. Or at least somebody in your little group would have been on board with finding a donor heart for Superman. But, you know, I'm like, it's it's fine. Um, you know, uh, and he, you know, and I, it makes sense towards the end. I'm like, it's, it's nice and everything, but I, I was all like, uh, I feel like you could have gave this serum to somebody else to find a donor heart, but it was fine. It was, it was, it was still good. After being devastated, being taken back to the Kent farm, Lois and the boys are given the specifics of General Lane's plan and explains his intention to keep protecting his daughter in a certain way since he won't be there. His heart will still be able to protect Lois in the body of Superman. And he tells her via hologram. Meanwhile, General Lane's body is taken back to the Fortress of Solitude, where Kal-El's mother is told to use the heart, where she doesn't know if the process will work and states that it will take some time if it does. So... He tells, so do we get another hologram, a sad, you know, a Tony Stark hologram message, but we get General Lane this time. And it was touching. I I thought it was great. You know, um, it, 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 I, I loved how he's like, I won't be there, but it'll be <laughs> like, I'll still be able to protect you. And it'll be my heart inside Superman's body. And he says something like, with every beat, you you'll know that I'm there. And I just like, I was like, I'm tearing up now. I teared up because it reminds me of that Harry Potter quote that Sirius Black says, where he says, and I tell this to my kids after we lose a family member every time, because my daughter is very emotional. But I tell her, I was like, you know, just remember the ones that l love us. They never really leave us. They're always right here in our hearts. And, uh, and I just thought this was a great hologram message. <laughs> I'm like, man, are we going to get another hologram message next episode? <laughs> another death message. And, uh, it was great. Uh, I, I loved it. In the end, Clark is revived by the process of the new heart and awakens in the fortress of solitude. And that's where the episode ends, you guys. And again, I cannot tell you how much I love it. It'll be nice to see Superman back, you know, because they had to bring him back soon because, you know, we only got seven more episodes left. And it's a, it, a Superman show without Superman. I don't think so. Although Krypton was not that bad. It wasn't that great, but it wasn't that bad. I wish I would have got a third season just to, to, to wrap it all up, but it was fine. Um, I did. I And again, I love this episode. I thought it was great. Um, you know, I thought that the fight between Doomsday and Steel and Starfire or Starlight could have been a little bit longer, but I get it because those are like, those are CGI heavy because both Doomsday is CGI, both Doomsday and those suits are CGI heavy when they fight and stuff. And, but I thought that it was good. 
I love this episode. I cannot wait until next week to see what happens. Everybody's doing a good job acting wise. I'm loving it. Uh, my only thing is Jordan's just a little bitch. I said that before, but uh, yeah, I love this show so much. It's so good. I'm really excited to see how they end it. See if there's any more, any more superpower beings coming into this world. It'll be fun to see. Um, but tell me what you guys think about this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your favorite part? Who's your favorite character? Are you excited to see Superman back? And will he be different? I don't know. We'll see. But tell me what you guys thought. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind if you're new to my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on my next uh, Superman and Lois Breakdown Review. You guys have a good week. Bye.